What makes a mind come alive? This question is at the heart of every discussion about teaching and learning. At Mission Hill, teachers began addressing this by developing their curricula together. It's really cool. <laughs> we begin every school year off-site. The farm school is a particularly special place for us. All different ways to it is a place where we see each other for the first time after the summer break. I loved the hook in your introduction. As we think about our planning for the year, being a steward to the land, having meaningful work, and being kind just really speaks to the work that we're going to engage in. Allow kids to be creative with that. Almost like a this year, in every class and across every discipline, Students will spend the next several months investigating the first school-wide theme, the natural sciences. And I'm thinking about who those kids were who, who knew a lot about the anatomy and the importance of bees and sort of maybe pulling them to help. We are going to yeah. be studying honeybees a lot. Like every day we're going to be talking about them, learning about them, reading about them, and watching them. We're going to watch them fly, we're going to watch them dance, we're going to watch them eat, we're going to watch them clean, we're going to watch them make babies. Oh, oh come on. Wait, and what's different about that baby? Look at it now. Just cut that mass, I think. The For me to print out a Xerox and have them memorize all the organelles, I don't get the point. They'll absorb it in a meaningful way when they need to. So you guys already figured it out, you don't need me. Knowing how to find the information and how to solve the problem is what's most important for me. Coming from sort of science and engineering background, my goal is that they can work as a scientist or an engineer, that they can identify a problem and find ways to go about solving it. You guys all know about Janera's beehive. One thing we talked about was building a raised platform. A kid can express his understanding for how something works through building, for example, or learn measurement through construction. Gone over and working to make sure that your terrarium is going to live and thrive and be healthy. You always want to support it with some evidence, right? So that's one of our habits of mind. Russell, what's the evidence? You can't just say, because I'm Russell and I say so. You're great, right? But I need to have some evidence to support why you think it will happen. 15, 16, 18, 16, Poisonous to stale stuff. You know who loves milkweed? Yeah. Who? Butterflies. Yes, that is correct. Are you giving hooks? When you break it, it that's has a poison. white thing that's on it. Poison. Oh, that's poison? That looks like milk. And it's poisonous for a lot of animals, but not for the monarch caterpillar. You are going to work with a scientist sitting next to you to look really carefully at the seaweed that I give you. It smells stinky, I hear. What do you notice? Each group has already sat down and thought about the things that you want to teach people at the bee fair. Now it's time to start doing some work to make that happen. What right? about global warming? A raising temperature can mean that there is less water and food available for bees. Malik and Angel came up with a couple ideas. You could draw a poster of the anatomy, right, of the bee's body, or you could do it with clay. Clay. Clay, what about you? Paper. Different people need different things. If we want children to be inventors, we have to give them opportunities to invent. If we want them to be artists, then we then create lots of opportunities for them to create art. If we want them to be problem solvers, we give them moments of independence to figure out things for themselves. Every year, students get to go to the farm school. 
our oldest students spend two nights. Every time we go there and a kid has more ownership of that place, the more they imagine what's possible. You could sell it probably for about 50 cents a pound. You could sell poop for 50 cents. Yeah. Some of us need to move to learn best. All right, so. Some of us need our fingers to touch and our eyes to see. Some of us need time alone, and some of us need to talk with others to spark our ideas, draw conclusions, or see the world differently. What sorts of relationships characterize a school in which everyone, child and adult, is on an active learning journey? Now, go into neutral. Tune into the next episode of A Year at Mission Hill to meet Jaden and see the ways in which one young mind has come alive. Second grade mathematicians always include what? How do we know what children are learning? Oh, tell me about the number you made. Yeah. Our current education policies point to a narrow measure of success, high stakes reading and math scores. But teachers at Mission Hill use a variety of ways to get concrete, thoughtful feedback about teaching and learning, which applies to teachers as well as students. This child was pretty stuck and the thing that benefited him most was having his work read aloud to him. What I'm interested in is the different ways they got at it and what people think about that. I don't know what else it needs or what else it should have. And for each one to be a page of a book. I love that idea of a book. and initial sense of I can't do this. Overcoming that and discovering that they can is such a huge lesson. Mm -hmm. Something that made sense for you then? The word assess comes from the Latin to sit next to. Standardized tests are administered at Mission Hill, but teachers here find that direct contact and conversation are the most accurate way to judge if a child has mastered a skill or concept. And that's what I expect from you is greatness, Linnea. So what I'm pushing... Any inappropriate language? No. Or to figure out a new strategy to help them on the path to greater understanding. Look at what a great morning you had. Look at that. How does that feel? Good afternoon, I think that's good. Usually when you write, you get like a word, you get a couple sentences. Look at today. <laughs> that says it all, Caleb. Feels good, right? You did know. That's you, you got it. I end up with files of work because ultimately I'm someone who really believes in portfolio-based assessment. I really believe in looking at a student's work as the best indicator. And it's your work. Good job. Yeah, see like here? Mm -hmm. Developing a student's ability to measure progress is important for kids in all grades. Once they are in middle school, a more formal portfolio process also comes into play. The eighth grade exhibition, portfolio exhibition process, is, it's almost like a thesis review, you know, where they have to defend their work. So they have an advisor that's a faculty member, they have their teacher, they have a family member, and then an outside community member. You may need to explain that a little more. Okay. So you might want to think about a visual example to support your words. As an eighth grader, this is Maurice's graduation portfolio. and The student gets feedback, but as importantly, the instructor or the teacher gets feedback. Using a program called Real Studio, which uses Real Basic as a coding up there as a text. For me, I mean, at the end of seventh and eighth grade, thinking about what I was capable of, I could take tests, I could write papers and things like that, but I, I couldn't put together a, a body of work and then talk about it for two and a half hours in front of a committee. It's right there. For this project, I was trying to figure out if you could make someone believe fake memories. I had a group of five people watch a video. Three out of those five people, I had them tell the other person lies about what happened in the video. They didn't even realize, but they started to believe what I was telling them. If there were one or two things that you could change about your experiment, what do you think would be most important to make it 
stronger scientifically? I probably would have waited a longer time before I started asking them questions. I am a psychologist and I also teach psychology in university. You had picked a really complex topic and you were so able to explain what you did, took all the different steps and looked for different explanations. For what I'm not sure what's going on right now, the last month or so, but we need to pull it back to, to where you were and we need to set you up so that you, you have those habits that you really want to bring forward in life. We all mess up, we all have setbacks, and I think the thing is any sort of life lesson, what do we do to learn from this and move forward? And I'm looking forward to coming back and hearing your work. If they say you're ready to get close to present this portfolio, then you've got some work to show. And that's what we're here for. That close? So what does that mean? When I had Lorenz in fourth grade, he was angry all the time, and he was way below grade level. I had him for two years, fourth and fifth grade, and uh, went through a lot together. Easy. <laughs> Easy. I'm nervous. Nah, chill out, you got it. Isolation is where you stop one of your body parts and then just move the rest. So, technically, I chose dance for my Beyond the Classroom essay because it helped me to release my anger in a positive way. The government of Somalia is very poor, dealing with the Al-Shabaab, which is a militant group who's taken over most of the southern part of Somalia. Malik, um, in the first sentence you said that Somalia hasn't had a stable government in 21 years. Why did it fall apart? Um. I'm not quite sure because we I didn't go that far back. Did you do something that was different from what the book or what a website explained? Oh, actually, the circus that I made worked better than the ones I saw. What did you do when that happened? Um, at first I smiled. And I, was like, <laughs> I said, yes, I did something new. Um, and after that, I learned that you don't always have to follow the guide. I'd just like you to tighten up those, those couple of things in that paper. Okay. okay. And the work tag on the photo report, we're going to take a look at that and do a couple edits. Okay. okay. Great. So that's it's time to celebrate a year of learning and growing. But there are political storm clouds that Mission Hill can't ignore. Reflection is in order in the last chapter of a year at Mission Hill. Testing has gotten out of control. Right now, the issue that's hanging us up is this predictive test. It's an assessment that is going to be tied to teacher evaluation. Um, Massachusetts has been awarded race to the top money. And so all of these things are now linked to state requirements. When we roll into the fall and it's time for predictives, our school is not going to administer them. When we do not do this, then I will be written up. My job is on the line. Um, and just as a school community, we just have to be prepared for that. We have to have our stuff together. What I want us to do today um, is uh, meet in age pair teams to um, write out two things. There are those more standardized assessments that are helpful, but in general for me, those aren't the assessments that help me guide a child through a school year. They don't show you the full picture and they don't show you that smile. I don't want them to read and write and do science and math and social studies because some government structure says this is what they should know at this age. I want them to have the tools so that they can learn anything they want to learn. 
of my 22 kids next year, I have 10 IEPs. Mm -hmm. My goal is for each one of those kids to do the best that they can as individuals, mm -hmm. the same as it is for every other one of my kids. Right. And if you're an outside observer saying a standardized test is a standardized test and I don't care about the individual, then my response is, I don't care about your interpretation. I only care about my students doing the best that they can do as individuals. And if right. there's a consequence, and that price is that our, that our principal is put at risk, then I'm going right down that road with her. We have to do certain things we don't want to do, mm -hmm. but you know what, that's life, and I can live with that, that's okay. But we don't have to change the way we, we believe in what we do, and we don't have to change what we give our kids.